18th July 2023. I was with Trevor this morning. Uh, we had a wonderful time of outreach. We went a little way out of Norwich, UK, um, to a McDonald's area in one of the villages nearby. And we had an absolutely amazing time talking to people in context about the Lord. Amazing conversations. One young couple, obviously madly in love. The Lord prompted me just to speak to them. Uh, Trevor was there, we were standing at the car and they were walking out, madly in love, sort of dancing together. And, uh, and then I was prompted to speak to them and I said, um, you look like you're madly in love, stating the obvious. And of course they were, and were pleased with the encounter with us. And um, I said, have you named the date? Meaning of their wedding. And she said quite joyfully, yes, November. Madly in love, suited for each other. <clears throat> and then, of course, I spoke to her about the Lord and um, we had a conversation and I gave them some things to think about and on cards and uh, off they went. <clears throat> Madly in love. Seeds were sown. So this evening, it's early evening here, the light is failing, so I've got this light on in the car now. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so this afternoon I've been thinking, reviewing today, praying through all the encounters we had, and um, I might touch on it a bit later this evening, but keeping it general, for the sake of anonymity of, of various people we met who opened up and spoke to us about things in their life where they are. The thought I had today is about this spirit of this age that we know as woke. And we used to call it PC, meaning politically correct. It's now called woke. And if you like, that is like a utopian spirit for a perfect society where everything is perfect. And a PC, a, perfect, a politically correct, woke character, is like I'm calling it a PCC, woke person, like they are a policeman, police constable. And the PCC, woke character, is like a legalistic person who wants things to be perfect according to their way of thinking, their mindset of perfection, what is perfection. So I see it like a Pharisee spirit that they want things to be perfect in a legalistic way as lawyers and wanting a perfect, hyper-perfect society. And it's all laws, but no Lord. No Lord Jesus Christ. Just all laws, legalistic laws, but no Jesus. And they want everything to be perfectly perfect, which is perfectionism, which is just another form of religion, an ism, a perfectionism, but no grace, no mercy, no compassion. And of course, Everything against the law of perfectionism, wokeism, is sin. But they don't call it sin. They just call it wrong. 
And when you understand the spirit of the Pharisee can come upon any one of us because it is a spirit, it's a legalistic religious spirit, but it is not God, it's not the Holy Spirit, it's not Jesus. And they can even use scripture to reinforce their perfect ways of running their perfect society according to their wokeism. And isms, all of the isms, is just a form of religion. Religionism is an ism, of course. And every religion has its laws, its precepts, its statutes, its parameters. It's a box that keeps their people in to their way of thinking and of course it keeps people out of their way of thinking. Wokeism, politically correct, quotes Christianity in a form of wokeism. And by now we can see really that every franchise of the world, like McDonald's and, and all these global franchises, they are a type where everybody agrees with the parameters of that global company called McDonald's. And if you want to be an employee, you have to submit to the way of McDonald's and you wear the uniform, which has the name McDonald's. And Trevor and I were discussing the, the idea of church. What is a church? A church is ecclesia, people, a gathering. And of course, we know by now what Jesus defin defined as church as where two or three are gathered. I am with you, says the Lord. And of course, Jesus is not just with us, he's in us by his Holy Spirit. So yes, he's with us, but he's in us. And in a very real sense that Jesus is the root of our life, not religion, life, not religion, ways, the way of Christ, the way of the Holy Spirit is the way we live our life according to Christ according to the Holy Spirit, according to Scripture. But we're not setting up a utopian, a utopian Christian society to reinvent a perfect society, which is what Joseph Smith did with the Mormons, even having Salt Lake City, Utah, as his headquarters, where it was one man's vision which caught the imagination of, of others like him, and they became a box of religion, religious rules and statutes and precepts that people live in that box called Mormonism. And of course, Mormons have religious outlets, temples, churches, church buildings, whatever they call it, kingdom halls, like the Jehovah's Witnesses, they are all brands of a form of utopian, quotes, Christianity. But we're not living according to the rules and regulations of a utopian Christianity. So I just want to talk about the recovery group called the AA, the Alcohol Anonymous Fellowship, AAF, the Alcohol Anonymous Fellowship. And here we have another type of, let's call it Christianity, in quotes. They believe in a higher power. They call that higher power God, G-O-D, with a capital G. And in their parameters, rules, statutes, precepts, they say that this God, G-O-D, with a big G, is the God of your understanding. You came to believe in the God of your understanding. And that is the, uh, the general belief of every AA 
fellowship member. But of course, the God of my understanding and your understanding as the body of Christ, our God is Jesus Christ. Jesus, the only begotten Son, came from the Father, and we understand him by the Holy Spirit, by Scripture, by the Holy Spirit, in agreement with God himself, <clears throat> we understand Jesus Christ is the way to the Father. And God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And we know that this is God because God has told us who he is. He is the uncreated creator. He's the God overall. Big G. Yahweh, Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So I'm stating the obvious again. I and Trevor and others, yourselves, we still believe in the deity of Jesus Christ. He's not just the Son of God. He's not a son. He's not a, an angel. He's not created. Jesus Christ is God. Fully human, fully God. We discussed today, Trevor and I and another brother, the nature of Jesus Christ was that he was born of a virgin woman, supernatural baby, not begotten of this world. Jesus, fully human, had a human body, but no sinful nature. Jesus wasn't a created Adam, although Christ is called second Adam, it doesn't mean he was created like the first Adam. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, fully human, grew up in the womb physically. And physically, his brain and his uh, human body organs developed. And at some point, he was born physically, out of the womb of a physical woman. He grew up, he was taught to, to speak, he was taught to understand the words and what they meant in the usual way parents teach their children. And of course, Jesus went through the school in the synagogue and he was taught by rabbis, teachers, how to read, write, learn about scriptures <clears throat> and understand what life is according to the Torah, the Jewish books of teaching the Psalms and the prophets. And Jesus grew up. Jesus had a physical body. He had a, phys uh, he had a soul within the body. He had a soul, mind, emotions, and will. Thinking, feelings, and actions. And Jesus had a free will. Jesus had a conscience. Jesus was tempted in every way, yet did not sin. Jesus did not have sinful nature. Jesus wasn't born in sin. The sins of his parents were not visited on him. Jesus grew up a perfect little boy into teenage years. And Jesus was tempted in every way to sin. So he knew what sin was, but he never sinned. Never. He never had sex before marriage. He knew it was wrong. Why? Because he had a conscience. He was taught no fornication. Sex is for marriage. And of course, Jesus at 12 years old was too young to marry. He knew he was the, the father's son in the father's house. And he was searching the teachers of law with questions and giving them answers. And they were amazed at this young man. So Jesus was fully human. He had a soul, but his spirit was God. 
within himself. Now here's the mystery, because Jesus is the Son. But the Son is the same as the Father and the Holy Spirit, because God is one. The different nature of God, yes, God is Father, God is Son, God is the Holy Spirit. And if you start to define who God is, you'll see that God is the light, the truth, the way. God is. God is the teacher. He instructs, he guides, he counsels. He's the saviour. He's the deliverer. He's the rescuer. All these terms we apply to God. He's the living word, the living truth, the living bread, the living water. And God has put his spirit in us if we're born again. When you're born again, you receive God on the inside. So let's just close. I don't want to make this too long. Let's close by talking about the AA Fellowship. The AA Fellowship, Alcohol Anonymous Fellowship, it's a type of church with God as the head of the church. The highest power over the AA Fellowship is God. But we know God to be Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, and the Father. And I have been to AA meetings. Jesus set me free from the need of the stuff I was addicted to 39 years ago. And the process of cleaning me out on the inside, spirit, soul, and body on the inside, the Holy Spirit is transforming me on the inside, renewing my mind, on the inside, conforming me to the likeness of Christ on the inside. Cleaning me out, cleansing me by the blood of the Lamb on the inside. I might look the same on the outside, but on the inside, God is at work within me. God calls us his workmanship. He's changing my story on the inside. Every day is a chapter. Every day is like a book. The number of people we met and spoke to today is those conversations are now in the past, but the seeds were sown. And that's why we pray for them, for the Lord himself to water the seeds that were sown. That's why we leave cards with them. And yes, we leave the sinner's prayer with them for them to look at these words and we say, if you make these words your own, if you genuinely want to commit your life to Jesus Christ, here's how you do it, but you must mean it. And the Lord knows if you mean it. It's like a prayer for Peter. It's like Peter didn't meet Jesus, but somebody comes to Peter and says, Jesus has told me to tell you, Peter, if you put down your nets and follow him, you'll receive eternal life. But of course, we know Jesus himself directly spoke to Peter. And Peter spoke to others, telling them the truth in love. So the AA Fellowship is a good place for people with addictions to go. And of course, there's, there's alcohol fellowship, there's narcotics, uh, there's other addictions and, and other things that people depend on. And there are these self-help therapy groups all over the world now. But unless people bow the knee to Jesus Christ, yes, they can be helped by the group, but the danger is there the group becomes God himself. The group, the people. And if you call the AA Fellowship a church, an ecclesia, a gathering of people, it's a fellowship like a Christian church, but unless they have Christ as the head of that AA Fellowship, it is just a religious church with its own rules, its own regulations, its do's and its don'ts. Some AA Fellowships will accept the name of Jesus Christ as part of the testimony of its members. But every spirit that is not Jesus Christ, not the Holy Spirit, not God the Father, is another spirit. So the wokeism is a religion that is growing. 
that people want to be tolerant to people, to accept them, diversity, accept everybody's lifestyle, it's all relativism, it's okay, that's okay, that's okay. But it brings Christianity, and I mean Christians, I mean those disciples living according to Christ, according to the Holy Spirit, that brings us under the spotlight of wokeism, and they say we're wrong. They say we're bigoted. And we can say, well, it's not what I say, it's what Jesus says. It's what God says through the Bible. And of course, wokeism doesn't have the Lord. All they have is their laws. It's all legalistic laws, but no grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. So pray for us here in Norwich, UK, Trevor and I reaching out to people with addictions and or mental illness. The two are linked. Emotional disorders, mental illness, the reliance on things of this world, including medication, illicit or legal. Jesus, once he's on the inside, brings healing, cleansing, deliverance, casting out things in within people's lives and false ideas in their heads about him, about who Jesus is, who God is, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Yahweh, Yeshua Messiah. The Holy Spirit on the inside is working within us, changing us, transforming us, conforming us into the likeness of Christ, helping us. The Holy Spirit is the helper and then he uses us to help others. As Jesus has set you free, he gives you the power and authority in his name, in the Holy Spirit, to bring freedom to others. Those whom the Son sets free are free indeed, and it is for us to reach out to those who are not free, and that includes all those bound by, let's call it religious franchises, whether they're worldly McDonald's franchises or denominational, international denominational franchises, there's no difference. You run your franchise according to the pattern of this world, you can be woke about it, you can be legalistic about it, and it becomes members only, customers only, members only, staff and customers, and it doesn't matter what you call it, your franchise, it is what it is. But the body of Christ is not an it. The body of Christ is Christ's body of obedient disciples, ambassadors, who are waiting for Christ's return, yes, but we are obeying the Holy Spirit to reach out and tell the truth in love to whosoever we meet, encouraging them prophetically, encouragement, in prophecy, don't have to say the Lord is saying, we just give them the truth in love, encouragement. That, that opens up the door for the Holy Spirit, for Jesus, for, for people to realize there is a God who loves them. So pray for Trevor and I and pray for all those we met today. And we know that the Lord will add water and growth to the seeds, because that's what he says he does. So thank you, Jesus, for using us today to help various individuals and, and two people who are in recovery. We help them both to understand a little bit more about life in Christ. God bless you, brethren of the one God, his one church throughout this world. Let's keep praying for each other and looking up for our redemption is near. God bless.